So we are back uh, at the boat finally, one week uh, after the, uh, the second step of installation. And the purpose is uh, really to uh, polish the welding, to have them uh, having an aspect uh, that is perfect, shiny. And it's not uh, only for the um, the good looking, if I may say so. It's it's also to make sure there is no not any uh, possibility of oxidation uh, during the lifetime of uh, this particle. And we're going to install the solar panels afterwards. So, uh, as you can see, this is the aspect just after the welding. So it looks uh, brown because it has been more or less burnt. Eh? And I did already polish uh, two of them and you can see the result. It's very shiny, very good result. So I'm very happy with that. Moi j'avais dans l'idée de faire ça avant qu'il soit monté, mais ça n'a pas été possible la semaine dernière. Donc bon, je te tape ça. And the difficulty of course is to uh, do it on the boat because the access is not very fantastic. Uh, I wish I could have done that uh, the last time, uh, just after the welding, before we installed the portico on the boat, but it was not possible. And here, these are the, uh, the, the, the other welding uh, on the lateral uh, tubes that are more difficult to do. Uh, and we're going to do that. So afterwards, we will install the solar panels and um, make holes in the, the tubes uh, so that the wire goes inside. Yeah. Voila, as we say in French. So how do I do the um, polishing the welding? Well, I use different discs, as you can see, with uh, different grains in order to uh, first uh, have a smooth uh, surface. And then the final step uh, of polishing, uh, well, this is uh, the uh, fine grain. And then the final step of polishing is done with a specific uh, disc uh, where you apply a polishing paste. paste. But, uh, I've, I've given the uh, information in the first video. All right, so I've done the job. I did not record it because this is really annoying and very noisy. Uh, well, there's no point of doing that. So let's have a look at the results. So these are the most difficult parts. It looks pretty good. And here as well, as you can see, uh, yeah, I find the uh, job uh, well done, actually, for a non-professional that I am. Um, and here is also some stuff I will have to add uh, to make sure that uh, there's no uh, movement, side movement of the portico. So I will connect uh, the bar that you see to the uh, arch uh, on, on the, the boat here. Yeah. <coughs> So now I have to decide where I have to make the holes to uh, pass the wires that will connect the solar panels to the MPPT that is inside the bowl. And as you can see, these tubes that um, are here to carry the uh, the dinghy, they go through the big uh, tubes. Uh, so maybe uh, the wire will not go uh, beneath this, uh, these tubes. But I'm going to do it actually. And I, uh, you will see later on. I should have uh, listened to myself because uh, I knew it would not go <laughs> through. But okay. Um, so, first, 
I wanted to install the solar panels on the uh, Orion table systems that I did uh, and connect them uh, before making holes in the, in the tubes to make sure everything was uh, running fine. So I covered the solar panels with, uh, with cardboard, the, the initial cardboard in which they were coming in, and just to make sure they don't uh, store energy uh, because uh, it's not good for the solar panels eh, if they're not connected. And uh, this is the, the last uh, fixation now. Uh, I forgot to uh, record the video where I struggled to place the solar panels myself. Voila, it's done. So let's see. Oh, it moves nicely. Just the way I wanted it to be. So this is really good. I'm just checking if they don't... Uh, if they don't bend when I uh, move them, but that's okay. Yes, I did it. My goodness, so much work. What you have to know is, of course, when I uh, try to fix the solar panels, I lose some tools in the in the bloody sea. And the problem in the harbor where I'm located is that uh, this is really uh, mud uh, at the bottom. So you can't uh, go in the water and search for what you've lost. <laughs> because you don't see anything and it's buried under uh, at least 50 centimeters of uh, this fluffy mud. I don't know exactly how to call that in English. But that's it, so let's uh, connect the solar panels. Uh, I'm going to uh, connect them not in parallel but in series. Um, and so one of the plus uh, wire will go to the minus wire of the other solar panels and then uh, they will be connected to the MPPT. So that's it, it's connected. I open the uh, app for the MPPT because it has a Bluetooth connection. So you can see uh, if it's working or, or not on your phone, which is very convenient. And um, well, you don't see a lot on the screen, I'm very sorry, but actually, uh, it was well connected, so this was very good news. That meant um, the connections were well done. So I removed the cardboard um, and then I'm gonna check uh, that indeed, uh, although there is really no sun and it's uh, winter time so on top of that the amount of uh, solar energy they receive is very low but i could uh, see that uh, it was working so again uh, it was uh, to make sure the connections were rightly uh, rightly made before uh, putting the wire inside the tubes Hiver, fin d'après-midi, il est 16h. Bon, ça y est, il s'est rallumé, donc c'est bien. Il n'y a pas de problème, c'était... C'était le bon... La bonne configuration. Allez, on va voir ça. All right. So, let's see the final results. Because um, it is good to have a look to the masterpiece. Voilà. 
before continuing. Uh, that gives you uh, some uh, energy to, <laughs> to finish the job. Uh, yeah, I was already a bit tired, I have to admit. And it looks uh, really good. So the uh, orientation of the solar panels are good, 30 degrees, something like that. So this is the first hole I made and the second hole, you know, to pass the wire. And as I said, um, it's going to become complicated because in the first hole, of course, the wire won't go through the entire tube. So I need to, of course, uh, extract the, the wires uh, because they were connected to the MPPT. So I have to disconnect. Um, and to uh, reconnect after passing them through the tubes. Um, this is the, the fun part. Voila, these are the extremities that I have to uh, um, make through the holes. Yeah, so uh, this is not the first uh, try, uh, so you see me struggling uh, because of course they, the wire entered the hole eh? and then when it reaches the um, other pipe that is going through this uh, tube, it doesn't go through, so I cannot reach the bottom hole at, uh, at the feet. And yes, I told myself that already. So I have to make another hole here um, at the end of the day. And this is uh, additional work and I'm already quite tired, I have to say. So I'm not super happy. <coughs> But then it goes uh, pretty well uh, and then um, I'm happy again because I can really have the wires going through the, uh, the tubes. Finally. So what's happening inside and how do you connect these wires to the MPPT? Well, actually, there's no nothing new on that video because you might find that on uh, a lot of videos on, on uh, YouTube or Internet. Uh, but I just wanted to uh, share that with you uh, guys, uh, how this is set up in, uh, in my boat. Um, very simple. Uh, so here is the uh, <coughs> MPPD. Um, so you have the uh, wires coming from the solar panels here. Yeah, plus and minus. Uh, they come. They are connected to the uh, MPPD, and then you have the two wires coming out of it and going to the battery. Um, I have two batteries, so one of the wire, here the uh, minus, the black one, goes to the first battery, and the other one, the red, goes to the other battery. This way you have an homogeneous uh, charging of your two batteries, otherwise if you connect to only one, one will be uh, uh, exposed to uh, more cycles of uh, charging, discharging, and it will charge the other battery in a second step. So you make it last uh, a lot less 
uh, in time compared to the other one. So it's important to have an homogeneous charging scheme of your batteries. And that's what I'm explaining here. Um, and I realized that because I had a bad experience with uh, a third battery that I had, um, where I connected my uh, my e foil um, my e foil uh, charging uh, system fuel cells, sorry, uh, and that killed <laughs> the battery. So I'm not going to repeat that. Voila, so the uh, wiring is done, uh, everything is okay. Now I'm connecting the portico uh, to uh, make it very stable uh, uh, from the uh, side movement. And I had all the pieces of equipment, but of course the, uh, the pipes that I ordered, and I explained that in the first video, uh, should have been in 25 millimeters uh, diameter and they came in at uh, 22 millimeters so I had to adapt the whole stuff to make it uh, work and I'm going to ask my uh, welding man Mich M Michael, Michael uh, to do the welding uh, so that it's uh, very very stable afterwards Yes, just showing that uh, I had a, a piece of uh, pipe uh, 25 millimeters that I used to uh, to make sure I could adapt my 22 millimeters pipe uh, into the uh, attaching uh, pieces, and that's the yeah, just showing how I did it. Nothing very complicated. But I was happy that I uh, cut the pipes uh, uh, with the right dimensions. Uh, it's always annoying when you have a few millimeters uh, difference between what you should have done and what you actually achieved. So this time everything was uh, well, so I'm, I was very happy with that. So it seems to be uh, working well, very stable. And as I said, uh, I will have to um, weld the, uh, the 22 millimeters tube into the, uh, the, the small pieces of 25 millimeters tube that I uh, cut uh, to adapt uh, to the stuff. And uh, here there is a bit of space, so you have you can see it moves a little bit. So I will remove. Um, part of the adaptators uh, to squeeze it very nicely so that it works pretty fine. So the first one was uh, executed very nicely. This second one created uh, more trouble because of course I did lose a screw in the water. Oh my goodness. And I uh, used another screw that I had to cut because you see the piece is, uh, is, uh, is too long. And the problem is that uh, the screw uh, screwed me, actually, uh, so I had to replace it, uh, and I could not, so I had to uh, drill into it to remove it, what I'm doing now, and to replace it with the uh, another screw that I cut at the right dimensions. So, uh, as usual, uh, you plan A, never works 100%, you always have to <laughs> plan B and make some uh, adaptation. Uh, that's the way it is. Uh, I hope it's not only me uh, on Earth. Dans la 
service. Alors j'ai coupé une vis pour qu'elle soit pas trop longue. Et en fait, ça a dépassé à mort. Et oui, parce que c'est ça l'histoire. Et bien sûr, quand on coupe une vis. So now I really pay attention to not lose any screw in the water. Uh, and it will go well. That's the good news. Voilà. Ah, ça y est. Voilà. I really thought I would never achieve it after so many I faced. But I did it. And uh, you know what? I am very happy and very proud of it. It looks very nice, at least to me. It looks very nice. And I have uh, orientable solar panels. So this is really good. Voila, guys. Uh, please uh, send me your comments. Um, and if you have a similar experience, uh, please share with me. I'm uh, very interested. You can see that I'm happy to be <laughs> relieved from this uh, work. Two days, yes, at least two days, plus the preparation at home. Yeah, it's uh, saving a lot of money, because I saved 2,000 euros, basically, but not saving times, obviously. <laughs>